you have a desire, but you don't want to face your fear, or if you have a want, but you're not willing to do what you need to do, you'll spend your whole life disappointing yourself. Why didn't you accomplish them? Why didn't you accomplish what you want? Because maybe you didn't do enough of what you needed to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we talked about the six basic human needs. Today, for episode number 525, we are going to talk about what you want versus what you need. So, I get a lot of DMs from people, and I am having a lot of conversations all the time, really, with listeners, hmm. members of the Next Level family. And a lot of what you see is people say, I'll say like, what are you struggling with right now? Like what is, what is one of the things you're really struggling with? And people will say, I want to find happiness. I want to find fulfillment. I want to find purpose. purpose. I want to find relationships or, okay, that's what you want, but what do you need in order to do that? I think that we tend to focus on the wrong thing and and then we wonder why we don't get the results. And I think the, the goal with this episode is to figure out, like, when you say, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want. Okay, well, what do you actually need? I want to make more money as a coach. Right. right let's say you're, we, we have a lot of people that listen that are, like, whether it's fitness, fitness coaches coaching, yeah. or, you know, maybe early business coaches. I want to make more money. Okay, what do you need? What do you need to do? What do you need to learn? What do you need to practice? What do you need to overcome? What do you need to add on to get rid of? Right? Because at the end of the day, we all want something different. But if we're not doing the necessary things, then we're not going to get it in the long run. It's even deeper than that, well, too. Then do because it. Then, hey, hey, then do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're headed. <laughs> then do it. Then do it. That's what I'm doing. Okay, then do it. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. Just get it. <laughs> <laughs> We're giggling. Uh, just a little behind the scenes. So Alan's had snacks today. Uh, so many snacks. So many. We're not. So Taryn and I. <laughs> snow many. Snow many. Snow many. <laughs> Taryn and I took all of our snacks from the home and we brought them into the studio. And I said, I said, babe. She's like, are these gonna get like wasted? And I said, babe, I promise. Once I get Jeff eating them, these will all be, these will all be gone. So. I had Dunkaroos before the gym last night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, it goes deeper th even than what Kevin said because. You said someone wants more money. Mm. What's interesting is that they might not even say that. They might say, uh, I really, really want to buy a nice home for my future family. Okay, that's great. What you need is money. And then what you need to get money is sales acumen. Mm. And so, so there's layers, right? A lot of people, back when I did fitness coaching, I often talk about this. They, they would come to me because what they want to look good on the beach for that summer or for a wedding. They want to look good in their wedding dress or or spring is coming mm. or whatever. And it's like, okay, you want to look good on the beach. What you need is the habit of weight training and tracking your calories and hydrating consistently. And what you need is fitness mastery. I think that's really what this comes down to is everything that you desire – what you actually need in order to achieve that is some form of mastery, some form of it. So if you want to make more money and you're a coach, many of our listeners are coaches, uh, you're a fitness coach, you want to make more money. Let's say you want to buy a home. Okay, you're a fitness coach, you want to buy a home. Okay, how do you buy a home? You need money. Okay, if I need money, then what? how do I make money? Go get more clients. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> then what do I need for that? Well, maybe you need to learn how to do sales. And so, have you bought a sales book? The problem is, we don't always correlate, I want to buy a new home with, I should buy this sales book, yeah. right? But that's totally what needs to happen in order for you to achieve what you want. Otherwise, you'll kind of stay in this life of, like, wanting things that you never get and then wondering why. And in a weird way, it's almost like, okay, I'm trying to think of, like, what I wanted when we went to... Florida and lived with T Mac for a month. Like, what did I want? Right. I think I wanted money because I knew we were going to be recording online training programs. And I was like, oh, this is a good way to make some passive income. Right. What I needed wasn't necessarily what I thought I wanted. 
Right. Also, what I got isn't necessarily what I wanted and or needed. Right. Like all the things that have come from that, I don't know if that made sense. That was it was all over the place, but all the things that have come from that, T Mac went with us to Brennan Burchard's. Yep. Was that after? No, it was before. It was before. Yeah, it was before. We interviewed T Mac in Uxbridge, Mass, at yeah. the house. And yeah. that was the second time I ever met him. He's like, You guys should come live with me for December in Florida. <laughs> We were like, yeah, man, that's cool. Sounds good. All right, we'll do it. It was, it was more than that. It was, but, yeah. it was. but honestly, it was kind of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we ended up going to Phoenix with him. Yep. So I never knew that was going to happen. I never wanted that to happen. And little did I know, I actually needed that. Interesting. All of that stuff that, it's almost like you got to try to think a little bit, and again, this is a generalization, but you got to try to think a little bit bigger than you're thinking. Because if you're only thinking, okay, I need, I think it's short term versus long term. You could literally say, okay, I need $400 to make it through the rest of the month. And I've seen a lot of people be guilty of this. Mm. Honestly, I've seen a lot of people be guilty of this. I need $400 to get to the end of the month and I'll be able to pay my bills. Instead of how do I stop this from ever happening again? What you want is $400. What you need is to learn how to make this go away forever. Right. It's what like you need that with is a lot to learn of things. How to sell or what, what do they need? So what they want is four hundred dollars. What do they actually need? I think it depends on it depends on a couple of things. If they're somebody who's in a nine to five, they probably need to learn how to save money better, right? Or make money with a side hustle or whatever, or learn how to grow your career. Yeah. Yeah. Another one would be, um, let me think. Okay, you get out of a bad relationship. What I want is somebody who is going to be super easy to communicate with, not have high standards, or whatever it may be. What you need might actually be somebody who's going to challenge you with who they are as a person. Right. I don't think what you want and what you need are the same. They're very rarely the same, I think in my opinion. sometimes they're the opposite Yeah. in a weird way. Yep. And that's why people get stuck. I remember what I wanted when I dated the, the girl I always talk about who left me and, and wanted to move to California. What I thought I wanted was somebody who was pretty, that was into fitness, and that was like, gonna kind of follow me around. Kind of. Like, I wanted to be the leader. Okay. And I don't think that's what I needed, because she ended up being the opposite. She was into fitness, and she was very beautiful, but she was definitely not a follower by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Which I think helped me figure out, like, ego and a lot of other things. I think that if you only go with what you want, you're gonna be in trouble when you get it. For sure. Because you might not be able to keep it. I think, well, we talked on the sales training a little bit, or the on Monday we did a mastermind about turning your connections into clients. That's, That's dropping, dropping Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. yes, yes. And one of the bullet points during that mastermind was desires and fears. What someone desires is what they want. What they fear is holding them back from what they want. Yeah. And so what you want might be there's so many analogies for this but you might want a nice car but what you fear is talking to your boss and asking for a raise yeah. what if you can't have both I, I, can you buy a nice car <laughs> it's funny when you when you break out of something it sounds like you stub your toe you go yeah <laughs> Just, I just had to. I hope you guys heard it. Uh, <laughs> and if you saw it on YouTube, it's probably hilarious. It was. It was. I, uh, I, 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 I feel like this is where when you talk about the confidence conundrum, yeah. this is where people live their life a lot of times. Uh, you know, you've heard me talk about that quote of people live a life of quiet desperation. This is it. Mm -hmm. What you want is different than what you're currently able to get, but because you're so afraid, it's you're too afraid of this thing that's required of you to face that thing in order to get the other thing. So for example, I'll try to bring this as easy as, as I possibly can, as, as down to earth, as tangible. Any one of us, whether you're listening, Kevin or myself, any one of us can save $100 a week. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not all of us will. And the reason why is because we're afraid of what we'll have to give up to do that. 
But you should be more afraid of being <clears throat> broke than you are of giving up that pair of shoes or that, mm. you know, bag. So everything is desire and fear. Do Are you less... It's almost like if you have a desire, right? You have to be more afraid of not facing your fears than you are of... Um, you know what I'm trying to say? I, I do, yeah. Try to try it's to. It's hard to explain. Uh, uh, the example I was thinking is a relationship. Okay. Like you want a relationship. What you need to do is get rid of your ego or something. Right. And like that's your biggest. The other thing is you might not even be aware of it. That's you, the problem. This is this is hyperconscious stuff. But you might not even be aware of the thing that's holding you back, stopping you from getting what you want. Right. So it's almost like okay, how about this? Uh, hold on. What you want. Okay, for me, what I want, I want to be a well-known, high-respected, and high-impactful uh, international speaker. Yeah. That's what I want. Right. What I need was to get over my fear of traveling. Right. And let go of the certainty of saying, look, I don't want to leave here. What I needed to do was be honest with myself. And for the longest time, I said, you know what, I'm not really into traveling. Right. Like, it's just not for me. Now, honestly, traveling isn't a huge thing, but... That was always my excuse of like, I don't, it wasn't, I'm afraid of planes. What I had to do was be honest about my fears. That's what I needed exactly. to do. I didn't want to do that. Exactly. And I still don't want to fly. You guys know this. Right. I had a dream the other night that I was in a plane crash, as a matter of fact. Right. Didn't enjoy it. Everything is that. I know. Everything is that. We have wants, and it's 2021, and people are setting intentions and goals. I have this weird situation or challenge, and with my clients, I've even told them, I said, listen, like... I'm all done coaching people that have goals that that are that they don't want bad enough to face their fears. Like you cannot want to achieve something without also wanting what's necessary to achieve it. And and I think that there's certain people who who want things but have no concept whatsoever of what that will require. And I don't know how to how to break people out of that pattern. I I don't personally I don't set goals Unless I believe it will be worth it. But you have to be kind of aware. It, it's very hard for me to, to explain this because I'm, I'm kind of contemplating and we're both verbally processing in this episode, but that's when we're, we're on the verge of a breakthrough. What's a good example of a client recently who, okay, one of my clients wants to make 200 grand in 2021. Okay. Love He's that. in commercial real estate. Great. I was on the phone with him yesterday. Okay. We just broke down. Okay. How many sales calls, cold calls? The, here's the way in which he does it. Cold calls, emails, follow-ups with past clients, uh, snail mail, which is just sending, people know what snail mail is. Okay, and then we broke down how many cold calls do you have to make per day right. that will correlate to the, well, first we said how many clients do you need a month to get, <clears throat> 200, so 200 grand a year, you're, you're good at like quick math. 200 grand in 2021, what's 200 grand uh, divided by 12? Uh, probably like, 10 would be 120, 20 would be 240, probably like 16 to 18,000. Yeah, okay, it was 16 something, 16,500 or something like that, I think. We did this literally yesterday. Okay, you want to make $16,500 a month. Great, that's a great want. Okay, what do you need to do mm. in order to do that? How many clients do you need? He said about four. I need to do about four deals a month. Okay, awesome. What's required of you to get those four deals? See how there's layers? This is why it's so hard and it's it's so hard to explain. It's like, it's really easy to want. Wanting's the easy part. I, I think it's going through the, okay, what m is required of me to actually get that? And that's what Kevin and I are always trying to do for the listeners is like, listen, everyone wants. Everyone wants. Yeah. That, that's so easy. But we're trying to give you what you need. And this client needs to make 10 cold calls a day needs ten, my goodness. to send 10 snail mails a day, needs to send three emails a day, and needs to follow up with at least two past clients per day. Now, you can want to make 200 grand a year. Do you also want to do 10 cold calls, 10 emails, uh, three snail mails, or 10 snail mails, and then three follow-ups? If the answer is no, then, then that's fine. Just don't set the goal yeah. because you'll spend the rest of your year upset about yourself because you, you're you not keeping your promises. I think it's interesting too and it's important to, to seek counsel. Like figure out somebody who, 
again, and I don't know this if this person is math minded, but very easily you can. Fi- I did this with a client recently and said, like, you want to make a hundred k? That's that's not that much, right? In terms of what you actually have to do, exactly. this is what you have to do. Very similar to what you did, right? I think it's very important now, especially now that we're going into twenty twenty one. Everybody has goals. We set goals. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. We set goals. And on our last team call, we literally went through and said, okay, what does everybody have to do on the team in order to, to do that? Also, I want to give a shout-out to the team. Give a shout-out. Amy, appreciate the hell out of you. Crushing it. Uh, Jen, you're the best. Jenna, the sweetest. Alessandro, Alessandro, our, Italian, our Italian friend. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brandon, appreciate you. Am I missing anybody? Me, you. That's seven. Ron and Aaron. Ron and Aaron, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the the behind the scenes, behind the scenes, Ron and Aaron who make this possible. The We're, NLU team is amazing. The NLU team. Amazing. <clears throat> and again, it's our job to figure out, okay, what do we want? This is another, it's, everything's an example of this. I know. We want to have the most successful podcast in, in, uh, of all time in terms of, you mm-hmm. know, impact and personal development. What do we need? Well, we need to have a team, a strong team of people who are helping us along the way. Right. Need. It's, it's very interesting. And then what do we need under that? Good leadership. Yeah. What do we need under that? Emotional intelligence. What do we need under that? It's, there's layers. And, and that's what we're doing on this podcast always. We're giving you the layers. We're not talking surface level stuff. I think, it's, I think what you have to do is a lot of reflection. Right. A lot of reflection of, and that's what we said we do, on the 2021, ep- the Setting Intentions episode, I think we said that. Reflect on your previous year and figure out why you didn't accomplish your goals. And be honest with yourself. Like, why didn't you accomplish them? Why didn't you accomplish what you want? Because maybe you didn't do enough of what you needed to do. And then there's probably a fear underneath why you didn't. Yeah. If you're not consistent at something, there's probably some pain you're avoiding or something like that. What do you... So, uh, what do you suggest the listeners do? Because we've got eight minutes yeah, left. Yeah, this is the so longest, this is the longest, this episode, the longest ever. episode ever. So this is awesome. This is I love this topic, I man, because everything is the dance between... If you have a desire but you don't want to face your fear, or if you have a want, but you're not willing to do what you need to do, mm-hmm. you'll spend your whole life disappointing yourself. Yeah. I don't want anyone to live there. So what's an example, Kev, where you wanted something, mm-hmm. but didn't do what you needed to do or, or weren't willing to face a fear to get it? What did I want that I didn't understand? It's a good question, man. I don't know. I don't. I genu- off the top of my head, I don't know. What's something that you wanted that you never achieved? It's also a good question. When you and your friends decided to like, or you were like, "Oh, we're gonna the Winnebago, the thing? Winnebago thing." Yeah, what you wanted was all that stuff. I didn't know. Yeah. So just for the listeners, when I when I was like twelve, thirteen, fourteen, I my friends and I were convinced that we were just gonna buy a Winnebago and travel around the world or around the the country. You know, and have like really nice cars and four wheelers and quads. That was it. I mean, that's what we wanted. Okay. Uh, what did you need? I, I at that point, I don't know that I knew what I needed. Okay. Honestly, what, what do you know now that you needed? A lot of money, uh, <laughs> mastery. I needed to master something and get really good at something. Like what? Uh, at the time, it was baseball. My friend and my friends and I all played baseball, and we were all like decent. So I was like, oh, we're gonna all be in the MLB. Like, this is going to be fire. Like, we're going to have the best <laughs> life ever. It, it's interesting. It's very interesting. What a trip. But I think that's the other thing, too, is, like, I think this is why coaches are so important. And, again, I'm not pitching us. Like, uh, that's not what I'm doing. Their level of awareness on what it's actually going to take is higher. Is higher. And also, you have to be careful because they'll, you know, you might get a coach who t- says, we, we were watching somebody earlier mm. who says, like, hey, this is so easy. Like, this is so, oh, it's, it's so easy to to turn your podcast into a business. Like, all you got to do is just, you know, one day a week. It's pretty easy. Can I go off on this for a quick second? Uh, Real quick? Yeah, you can. All right, so we were listening to an IG story earlier, and this person literally said verbatim, uh, entrepreneurship, the people who say entrepreneurship is going to take a lot of time, and it's going to be really hard, and it's going to it's gonna make your life really challenging, I, they're crazy. Mm-hmm. The people who think entrepreneurship is hard are crazy. I think that's the biggest BS in the world. I, I really do. I, I think that some people could maybe 0.001% of people get lucky, but 96% of businesses fail in a 10-year period. Do you think that's because it's easy? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not saying not to be an entrepreneur. That's great. Do it. But going into it thinking it's going to be easy is just illusion. Yeah, and it's almost like... And this is the thing, guys, and, and we've come to this realization 
that what you guys want versus what you need from our perspective is always going to be a little bit different. Yep. And we will never say like, okay, today we know that the listeners want to be successful. All right, we're going to tell them what they need is this easy thing. Like, I don't believe in that. Alan doesn't believe in that. And I do think that's one of the reasons we're not bigger yet than we than we are because I don't think that we say sexy stuff really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're not saying a lot of sexy stuff. I'm not going to give you a way to make six figures in, in three days because I don't think it's it necessarily works like that. So it can be used, I guess the, the tangent we're going on here is it can be used against you. Right. What you want is a six pack. What you need is six minute, minute abs. Like they could put a commercial out and you'd be like, oh, okay, that's exactly what I need. When really what you need is a, a change in your diet, exercise, and activity level. Right. You know, it's it's this easy it's this easy thing that they say, but it's not. Can you go a uh, little more in depth on that? Because I think that might not have landed, but I think that's fire. Sure, sure. That what you want is what? What you want is to have a body like the guy does on the commercial. Okay. What you need, they're saying, is, yeah, is six minute abs. Is for you to do this. This. These leg lifts for six minutes a day, and in six weeks, you'll have a six-pack. And what you actually need, the truth, yeah. is what? Uh, years of training. You need a completely rehauled diet and exercise routine, and you probably need to do some cardio. And then time. And months, coach. Months, a yeah. year. Yeah. A year. And a coach. Like, It's interesting. It, that's, that's kind of marketing. Here's what Kevin and I will tell you, uh, and this is another really good example. You, you can want to start a podcast. You can want to have a successful podcast. What you need is to master influence, to master communication, to master video and audio editing, to master consistency, yeah. to master self-discipline. It's interesting, man. It's, it's like what Anthony Trucks talked about on stage. He said, it's not the tools. The tools aren't the problem. It's the technician. Mm. You know, you can have the best tools in the world, but, but you need self-mastery. And that's why I look at some people who have really have self-discipline, have consistency, have work ethic, have dedication and drive and hunger, and you know they're going to win. You just know it. And then there's other people who don't have those things at a high level yet, and the problem is they don't even know they need them. Yeah. And so it's like, we're, we're, I think it's our job to really, <clears throat> to really illuminate for everyone listening. Like, wanting is, yeah, wanting is great. It's, it's the first step, but you have to want what comes with it. And, and I guess be willing to surround yourself with people who are, who are willing to tell you what you actually need. This is another great example too. If you're, say you're a coach or you're an entrepreneur and you have a product or a service or whatever, what somebody wants is this, you create the, the fix. You create what they need. Right. Right. So I'm, I have a call next week with somebody who wants a, a couple of young ladies who want to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. And they messaged me and said, Hey, I want to start a show or we want to start a show together. We've been inspired by yours, which is amazing. Um, we're so excited. And I said, let me know if I can help in any way, any way, shape or form. Let me know. I also, just so you know, I do consulting calls where I set up the podcast for you guys. So you don't have to worry about the tech stuff and you can bring any questions you want. What do they want? They want to start a podcast. What do they need? They need help with the technical side of it. Right. Okay, well, that's my jam. I've done, at this point, Were they aware episodes. that they needed help with the technical side yes, of it? Okay. Which was which was very important for right. them to understand. Exactly. But that's, and it's not always going to be that way. But think of it this way. When I get on the phone with them, and I help them start their show, I get that completely set up for them, and they have these questions, I can then show them even more of what they need. Like, okay, we're talking now. Okay, let me tell you guys how we get good guests. Like, you guys might not even know you need that yet. Right. Because you don't know what falls under the umbrella of having a, su a successful podcast. Right. Okay, let me tell you about speaking. Right? Let me tell you about how to tell a story. Let me tell you about how to talk into the microphone. Those are the things that you need to know that you might not, it might not fall under the umbrella of wants. So how do people figure out what they need? I think ask. Yeah. Or Ask people ahead of you. Or get good at reverse engineering and saying like, okay, I want to... I wanna. I want this car. I want this really nice car. Okay, what would that actually take? Well, that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. How? I only made the last last year. I only made fifty k coaching. Like, what do I have to do to get that? Okay. Well, maybe I should seek. Maybe I should get a mentor. A mentor might help me be able to get more money. Right. I think you have to be creative. Yeah. But it's I don't the layers. You I don't went know that the you would. I don't know that you would know if you'd never done it before because I don't think. I don't think I would. I wanna. Uh, we have sixteen seconds, so this will be impactful. Okay. Last thing. What Kevin just did, the reverse engineer, 
so important. You want a $250,000 car. Okay, if you're out there listening, you probably set goals for 2021. And those are the things you want. I want you to break down the layers Mm. of, okay, I want this thing. Why do I want this thing? Okay, now that I know why I want this thing. Okay, what is required of me to get this thing? What do I need for resources? Do I need more money? Do I need more mentors? Do I need more courses? Do I need more discipline? Do I need more habits? Do, go through the layers. Go through that process. Don't just write the goal. Write all the things you can think of that you might need. Because honestly, I've, you, you've all heard this quote before. Like The only reason you don't have what you want is because of the fact that you're not developed enough to get it yet. That kind of thing. It's like, I think it was Tony Robbins who basically says something along the lines of the only reason you don't have what you want is the bullshit story you've told yourself as to why you can't get it. We need to figure out what's limiting you from getting what you want by doing that unlayering. So again, that's just that's what I'll leave with is, is tough, just unlayer your wants. It's a tough concept. Yeah. For sure. It really is. I, I didn't realize how tough to it's it is. It's almost like you should figure out what you need and then figure out you know what I mean? In like a weird way. Like, You might have to start with what you want. I think you do. You do. Yeah, you have to reverse engineer it, though. You can want an iPhone, but you got to figure out, okay, which store do I have to go to? Okay, Verizon. Okay, well, what's the monthly payment? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's, it's what do I want, and then it's what do I need to do to get it. Exactly. That's, that's basically what it is. Fire. Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, we were interviewed on the Superhuman Life podcast. Oh, yeah. With Frank Rich. Oh, sorry, Rich Frank. Two first names. I always get confused. Rich Frank. Is it? Frank Rich? It's Frank Rich. It says Rich Frank on the board. Oh, uh, yeah. It's Frank, Frank Rich. Frank. Frank's an awesome dude. Awesome, awesome dude who's into empowering people and going into his story and having these stories of other people. Alan and I, together on this, I think it was like an hour and a half, so this was one of the more in-depth shows that we've done together. Genuinely, genuinely really enjoyed doing it. Um, one of our best, I would say. I, I think it's important because Frank, we drove to five, and then Frank extended an olive branch at us. five. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a great dynamic three-way conversation. Frank, I'm sorry I didn't pronounce your name right, brother. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to start a podcast, reach out to Alan or myself. We have Next Level Podcast Solutions. Again, we have everything you could ever imagine from full podcast production where you don't have to do anything and you get social media clips sent to you or you know, small stuff. Maybe you want an, uh, an episode edited here, a video e- edited here. We do that as well and anything in between. And we can help you any way you want with podcasts. Oh, That's yeah. the one thing we've studied oh. for five years straight. Also, every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard every Time, Monday, you're yep. going to want to join us on those masterminds. Those masterminds are more valuable in person, not because obviously the content gets repurposed on the podcast, but being in a room with like-minded people that are all growth-oriented, it's going to rub off on you. If you think you're growth-minded it's, and you want to amplify that, you got to get around other people that are into that. It's, it's, it's like being at the concert versus listening on YouTube. It's just not the same. Bada bing, bada boom. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we don't have fans. We have family, and we will catch you on the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye.